Hi everybody, my name is Kelsey and I am Miss Judy's granddaughter and I live in Salt Lake City, Utah. And I'm really, really excited to be here today with you guys to read you a story. Now, when my grandma, Miss Judy, called me, I, and asked me if I would be on her YouTube channel, I knew exactly which book I was gonna pick. And I'm so excited to share one of my favorite stories with you guys today. Before we get started, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about myself. So I live in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I am a kindergarten teacher. And this is my dog, Bo. Now, Bo really likes listening to stories, so I hope he can be in our whole video, but he might want to go take a nap instead because he also likes taking naps. Okay, so the book I picked to read with you guys today is called Library Lion, and this is one of my absolute favorite stories. And something kind of fun about it is that my grandma, Miss Judy, actually gave me this book. So I've had this book for a really long time since I was your age, and I'm so excited to share it with you guys today. Okay, here we go. So Library Line is written by Michelle Coonston and illustrated by Kevin Hawks. Okay, here we go. I think it has such beautiful pictures and I love seeing the lion in the pictures. One day, a lion came to the library. He walked right past the circulation desk and into the stacks. Mr. McBee ran down the hall to the head librarian's office. Miss Merriweather, he called. No running, said Miss Merriweather, without looking up. But there's a lion, said Mr. McBee, in the library. Is he breaking any rules? asked Miss Merriweather. She was very particular about rule breaking. Well, no, said Mr. McBee, not really. Then leave him be. The lion wandered all around the library. He sniffed the card catalog. He rubbed his head against the new book collection. Then he padded over to the story corner and went to sleep. No one was sure what to do. There weren't any rules about lions in the library. Soon it was time for story hour. There we go. There weren't any rules about lions at story hour either. Story Lady seemed a bit nervous, but she read out the first book's title in a good, clear voice. The lion looked up. The Story Lady kept reading. The lion stayed for the next story and the story after that. He waited for another story, but the children began to walk away. Story hour is over, the little girl told him. It's time to go. The lion looked at the children. He looked at the Story Lady. He looked at the closed books. Then he roared very loud. Miss Merriweather came striding out of her office. Who is making that noise, she demanded. It's the lion, said Mr. McBee. Miss Merriweather marched over to the lion. If you cannot be quiet, you will have to leave, she said in a stern voice. Those are the rules. The lion kept roaring. He sounded sad. The little girl tugged on Miss Merriweather's dress. If he promises to be quiet, can he come back tomorrow for story hour, she asked. The lion stopped roaring. He looked at Miss Merriweather. Oh, and look at the face he's making. He is really trying to be good. Miss Merriweather looked back. Then she said, yes, a nice quiet lion would certainly be allowed to come back for story hour tomorrow. Hooray, said the children. The next day, the lion came back. You are early, said Miss Merriweather. Story hour is not until three o'clock. The lion did not budge. Very well, said Miss Merriweather. You might as well make yourself useful. She sent him off to dust the encyclopedias until it was time for story hour. The next day, the lion came early again. This time, Miss Merriweather asked him to lick all the envelopes for overdue notices.
Soon, the line began doing things without being asked. He dusted the encyclopedia as he licked the envelopes. He let small children stand on his back to reach the books on the highest shelf. Then he curled up in a story corner to wait for story hour to begin. At first, the people in the library were nervous about the lion, but soon they got used to having him around. In fact, he seemed very well suited for the library. His big feet were quiet on the library floor. He made a comfy backrest for the children at story hour, and he never roared in the library anymore. What a helpful lion, people said. They patted his soft head as he walked by. How did we ever get along without him? Mr. McBee scowled when he heard that. They had always gotten along just fine before. No lions were needed. Lions, he thought, could not understand the rules. They did not belong in the library. One day, after he had dusted all the encyclopedias and licked all the envelopes and helped all the small children, the lion padded down the hall to Miss Merriweather's office to see what else there was to do. There was still some time left before story hour. Hello, lion, said Miss Merriweather. I know something you can do. You can bring a book back to the stacks for me. Let me just get it down from the shelf. Miss Merriweather stepped up onto the step stool. The book was just out of reach. Miss Merriweather stood on her toes and stretched out her fingers. Almost there, she said. Then Miss Merriweather stretched a little too far. said Miss Merriweather softly. She did not get up. Mr. McBee, she called after a minute. Mr. McBee! But Mr. McBee was at the circulation desk. He could not hear her calling. Lion, said Miss Merriweather, please go and get Mr. McBee. The lion ran down the hall. No running, called Miss Merriweather after him. The lion put his big front paws up on the circulation desk and looked at Mr. McBee. Go away, lion, said Mr. McBee. I'm busy, the lion whined. He pointed his nose towards the hall towards Miss Merriweather's office, but Mr. McBee ignored him. Finally, the lion did the one thing he could think of to do. He looked at Mr. McBee right in the eye, then he opened his mouth very wide and he roared the loudest roar he had ever roared in his life. Oh, and you can see all the words that spell roar in all capitals, he's shouting this out. Mr. McBee gasped. <gasps> You're not being quiet, he said to the lion. You are breaking the rules. Mr. McBee walked down the hall as fast as he could. The lion did not follow. He had broken the rules and he knew what that meant. He hung his head and walked towards the door. Mr. McBee did not notice. Miss Merriweather, he called as he walked. Miss Merriweather, the lion broke the rules. The lion broke the rules. He burst into Miss Merriweather's office. She was not in her chair. Miss Merriweather, he asked. Sometimes, Miss Merriweather said from behind the floor on her desk, there is a good reason to break the rules, even in the library. Now please go call the doctor. I think I have broken my arm. Mr. McBee ran to call a doctor. No running, called Miss Merriweather after him. The next day, things were back to normal, almost. Miss Merriweather's left arm was in a cast. The doctors had told her not to work too hard. I will have my lion to help me, Miss Merriweather thought. But the lion did not come to the library that morning. At three o'clock, Miss Merriweather walked over to the story corner. The story lady was just beginning a story for the children. The lion was not there. People in the library kept looking up from their books and computer screens, hoping they would see a familiar furry face. But the lion did not come that day. The lion did not come the next day either, 
or the day after that. Mr. McBee left the library, but he did not go home. He walked around the neighborhood. He looked under cars and he looked behind bushes. He looked in bash backyards and trash cans and tree houses. Finally, he circled all the way back to the library. The lion was sitting outside looking through the glass doors. Hello, lion, said Mr. McBee. The lion did not turn around. I thought you might like to know, said Mr. McBee, that there's a new rule in the library. No roaring aloud, unless you have a very good reason. Say, if you're trying to help a friend who's been hurt, for example. The lion's ears twitched. He turned around, but Mr. McBee was already walking away. The next day, Mr. McBee walked down the hall to Miss Merriweather's office. What is it, Mr. McBee? asked Miss Merriweather in her new, sad, quiet voice. I thought you might like to know, said Mr. McBee, that there's a lion in the library. Miss Merriweather jumped up from her chair and ran down the hall. Mr. McBee smiled. No running, he called after her. Miss Merriweather didn't listen. Sometimes there was a good reason to break the rules, even in the library. The end. Well, I hope you guys like that story as much as I did. I really like how it's about friendship and how the lion and a librarian, two kind of unlikely friends, become really good friends and the lion knows how to help her in the end, even if it means that he can't come into the library for a little while. So he was willing to be super brave and do something that he wasn't supposed to do so that he could help his friend, Miss Merriweather. Thank you, everybody. I hope you have a great day and thanks for listening to my story.